Welcome into game night in the PCC on the Porter County Sports Channel, streaming live on the internet at regionsports.com, facebook.com slash regionsports, and facebook.com slash PCC Sports. We come to you tonight from South Central High School as the Porter County Sports Channel presents the South Central Satellites taking on the Westville Blackhawks in the final game of the regular season before we move on to the IHSAA tournament. I'm Michael Brennan. I'll have the play-by-play -play for tonight's broadcast. And joining me with the color analysis, my buddy, Mr. PCC himself, Matt Wilson. Matt, Hello. it's good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Good to be here. Great atmosphere here for senior night festivities at South Central. Good stuff happening tonight. Yeah, this is the final game before we move on to tournament time next week, the most entertaining time. Whether you're talking about girls basketball or boys basketball, that sectional week is always so much fun. It's not stressful for anybody not anywhere else person. in the state. It's so much fun, and uh, this is a tune-up game as we get set for South Central and Westville. These two teams did meet up earlier this season. They met up in the PCC tournament. Westville getting the win 61-43, but this is a new matchup. They've seen each other now. Time to you know fix some of the problems that maybe were going on for either side, and uh, we'll see how the tune-up goes right before sectional time here tonight, Matt. Yeah, that's one thing when uh, the PCC tournament was happening. Westville was right in the middle of a 10-game win streak. They were averaging 65 points per game, ended up winning the Porter County Conference Tournament uh, back a month ago. Um, and South Central got a win over Washington Township a couple weeks ago for PCC uh, Conference support there. And honestly, they're playing pretty good basketball going into the home stretch. So should be a pretty good game tonight. Yeah, I'm excited to get this one going. Obviously, we got sectionals to talk about as well. Both these teams in the same sectional, which will be played over at North Judson starting on Tuesday. Westville will take on Boone Grove in game one of the whole tournament. That is the, uh, the only game that night. And then on Wednesday, March 2nd, you got North Judson against Career Academy. And then South Central will take on LaVille. So... There's a chance these two teams meet up at some point further down the road, even for a third time this season. It could be. I mean, that's one thing you never know. I know a big topic on all the chatter boards and Facebook is having a draw for sectional, but really, it's awesome having the blind draw because you never how those games will play out and seeing an upset happen. So that's one of the best things about the Indiana tournament. Yeah, sometimes I look at it, we're, we're, we're excited about a blind draw because you never know who's going to get who, and then sometimes we're like, man, that first-round matchup should be the championship exactly. game. But, you know, it, it is what it is. That's what IHSA has been doing for a while, and it's a, good, uh, it's a good system that they've got going for the past few years. Yep. All right, we got some guys to focus on here tonight for South Central. In terms of scoring, you're looking at Sam Haschel, and, you know, it's senior night. He's looking to have a big stamp on his last game here on his home floor. Yeah, that's one thing he does really well is just put the ball in the basket. He's got uh, just over 200 points, 216 for the uh, for the season, averaging 11.4, um, 36 and a half uh, percentage for three point. He does a good job attacking the basket. Yeah, he also follows up with a lot of assists as well. So he's not only the leading scorer with 11 points a game, but also helping out to try to get other guys an opportunity to score as well. So he's really kind of doing it all for this Satellites team. Yeah, and he has actually a good core group of guys to uh, to support um, in the scoring. It's just whoever is hot in those uh, specific times on the court. It'll be an all-senior lineup for South Central tonight here on Senior Night for them. They had a nice presentation earlier uh, before we went on the air here. Had a very exciting JV game as well. South Central won that one. So, uh, a lot of uh, good vibes coming in here to this matchup here tonight for South Central. Yeah, it was a good uh, good appetizer for the main main course. Uh, I always said when I was coaching uh, JV when when it was a close, tight game and, and going into overtime. So, but you do you feel this energy there with the seniors and it's it's a fun night. And then on the other side of things, you got Westville. They are led in scoring by Julian Ellis, and then on the rebounding side, Kenny Pepper. 
just under 14 rebounds a game, but obviously 20 points or just under 20 points a game for Julian Ellison scoring. So a lot of guys getting involved in uh, in the scoring opportunities for Westville, who are on just a uh, a really good roll, 13 and 8 coming into tonight. And Westville is a fun team to watch in transition. You have a point guard in Gavin Hannon, and he has over 100 assists this season. He can get it to Ellis, um, and then Pepper just cleans up any rebound, and he's averaging a double-double this season. All right, so we're just about set here for the national anthem and then the starting lineups here in just a moment. We could give this to you now, but I don't want to spoil the surprise. No. Although I already kind of spoiled a little bit, I guess. I said it's an all-senior lineup for, for South Central. So if you Unless are, you know the roster. I was going to say, unless you're very familiar with this roster, you may not know. South Central coached by Eric Spear in his first season with the Satellites. And then you got Drew Eubank in his fourth season with, with Westville. Eric Spear has been around a little bit. He was at Hammond Academy of Science and Technology and over at Morton. He really had a really good run at Morton for that one season yeah. before uh, Hammond kind of made a lot of shuffles with their schools. And uh, I talked to him at one point at the toward the end of that Munster season because I watched him coach really, really, I, I really watched the way he was coaching, and I was really impressed. I, I mean, I'm impressed with a lot of coaches over the years, but I was really impressed with the way he was talking to his guys, and even when it was an obvious loss for them, he was still in their face telling them to do these little nitty-gritty yes. things. And that's going to be a nice improvement here for South Central. Uh, not the season they were hoping for after 14-9 and nine in the last season, now down to 3-17. and 17. But I think he's going to make a big turn for this program. Here. He's the right man for the job for sure. He has that positive influence in the locker room and on the court. At this time, to honor our country and our flag. All right, we are going to tune you in to the national anthem here at South Central. A beautiful rendition of our national anthem. And we are just about set to get things started here from South Central. So we will introduce first the starting lineups for the Westville Blackhawks. On to the floor first, number 34, a sophomore 6'4", Caden Pepper. And now you got number 33, Kenny Pepper, a senior, 6'5". Here comes number 12, a 5'7 sophomore, Gavin Hannon. And now a senior, 5'9, number 10, Andrew Husky. And the last on to the floor, the guy we already talked about a little bit here, the 6'0 senior, Julian Ellis, number 22, here for Westville. We got the lights out again. We've had this back-to-back -back weeks, yeah, partner. Yeah, this is exciting. You don't see this very often. A little strobe light uh, going through the crowd. All right, so here's the starting lineup for the South Central Satellites. And we said it would be an all-senior lineup. Senior lineup, excuse me. Alex Newburn out on the floor first. Number four, a 5'10 senior. 
Now here comes Tony Guevara, number 22, a 5'9 senior. And now number three, the 6'1 senior, Justin Bunce. And now the guy that we previewed a little bit earlier, a 6'1 senior, Sam Haschel, number one. Last onto the floor, Jimmy Ward, a 6'1 senior, number five. All right, we are ready to tip this one off. We have a special shout out here to Dylan Zeman sitting uh, right in front of me here, helping us out pregame. Appreciate his help earlier. Good, good kid. All right, the opening tip controlled by Westville. It'll be taken by Hannon to start things up here. Blackhawks go right to left on your screen. This will be given up to Kenny Pepper. Back over to Hannon here on the left side. I've seen, seen Westville play a couple of times. They do like to be patient. They can be patient, but they do like to run the ball as well. So South Central will do a good job defensively, but Westville will wait to get their... Uh, get their buckets. Yeah, very patient here as Ellis gives that one off, off to the right. So trying to weave through this little man-to-man -man action here. Trying to drive into the lane, this one tipped. And they're gonna say it is gonna be satellite ball. So not a good possession to start for Westville, but certainly something that they will improve on as the game goes on. Yeah, that's one thing um, with Hannon being the, uh, the point, he does a good job of penetrating and kicking, and that just was off the just finger tips there. Just a little so. air mail. Starting things up here, Bunce gives off. This is Guevara. Now feeding inside underneath to Jimmy Ward for the first buckets of the game. Here comes Blackhawks. And answering with a three bucket. That was Julian Ellis. We talked about how much he can score in this one. Averages 19 points a game, just hit a three. Ashell, far side, feeding to the cutting Newburn, who goes to the rack and plays it home. So Alex Newburn gets in the scoring column. One point lead here for the Satellites. This one is gonna be a foul inside the lane. It'll be That'll be against Guevara. Going to tip this one in. It's picked, it was uh, tipped at the line. Now picked up again. Hannon trying to feed that one. Or steal that one, I should say. Now picked up by Pepper. Hannon going for the long range three. No good. What a rebound, though, on the loose shot and putting it back home. Caden Pepper really kind of, we'll call it a pass, I guess. It yeah, wasn't we'll a shot. We'll call it a pass. Give him credit for the assist there from Hannon. Three-point basket, long range, no good. That was Newburn. Feeding straight ahead, Ellis in the lane, trying to put it up, no whistle. Rebounded by Newburn, though. That's where the two teams right now, being athletic, taking those uh, like big blows in there. From the, from the right box there. Putting that one up, no good. Trying to tip it around. We got a whole volleyball match going up down there. And bringing it up the floor now with aggressiveness. Dumps it off to Pepper. Pepper lays it home. That's Kenny Pepper this time. That's what both teams like to do is attack that basket, and you're going to see that. So we'll see what happens. Guevara trying to slide his way through. We'll see. It'll be against Westville here. And that'll be on Julian Ellis. So Guevara will go to the line to shoot two. Make sure you stay with us after the game as we'll name tonight's peak performers, celebrating the best performances on the court for both teams. Knocking the first one down. It kind of builds the, you know, the confidence when you start doing free throws. You miss the first one, 
and you have it in your head like, oh, I, you know, not that I know I can't make them, but it just kind of helps. Yeah. It, it's, it's very, like, muscle it, it's, remembrance It is that these. muscle memory, but it's that mental clarity, too, knowing that you've been running up and down, take a reset, able to knock one down. So. We'll have a jump ball call. It'll be with the South Central as it started with Westville. So South Central basketball. Yeah, good hands by Bunce there to tie it up, get the jump ball. This one thrown out. Cheerleaders having to duck out of the way. Well, just be patient. Know where your spots are. So Hannon up the court now. Gives off. Caden Pepper. Definitely Westville with a size advantage in terms of height. Yes. Feeding right down underneath Caden Pepper with an easy two as he's just simply taller than his defenders out there. Let's give us to Ward. Now off to Newburn, trying to feed inside, trying to feed to Haschel. He has to dish it back out. Three on the way, and it is good for Newburn. Good inside out action there. Good passes by Newburn. Hannon trying to put that one up. No whistle. He's probably looking for, looking for a call there. Yeah, a little body. Cashel looking to penetrate. Had it poked away. Now this one is stolen. Pepper going to try to lay it home. A little too short on the put up. Ellis with the rebound. He goes up, gets the bucket. And there is a whistle, so they'll go to the line to shoot one. That's one of the things Ellis does very well, just being calm, cool, collected, gathers the rebound, goes up with the foul. Colton Bennett will check in the game for South Central. It looks like Jimmy Ward came out for a breather. Yeah, Ward's been uh, guarding him in the post here. and He's been doing pretty decent, so picking up his first foul. No good on the free throw attempt from Ellis. So a two-point lead. Give off to Haschel, left side. He goes for the three, and he hits. Eyes look, scanning the defense, pulls the trigger, shoots the three. Shoots 36.5%, or we'll just call it 37% from long range. Knocks it down there. Putting up the shot. They're going to call it travel, so call no bucket for Ellis. And Ellis is saying, what are you talking about? He was trying to gather that, I think, and that was the uh the And issue. it looks like the official said he kind of carried it on his right. leg as he was getting ready to bring it down, yeah. down the court. So one knocked out of bounds. It'll stay here with the satellites with a one-point lead here. Playing with a lot of aggressiveness and intensity on senior night. Last time they are in their home gym. Given to the corner for a three. Just off the mark, trying to get the rebound and gets it is Newburn. Still looking like he was fouled underneath. And a hit for Haschel. The uh, satellites are zoned in right there. Uh, they are hitting, from beyond the arc. They are certainly big from beyond the arc tonight. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out the rest of the game. Do they continue? to kind of let them have that outside perimeter shooting or do they start to give that out and then open up the, the lanes underneath and a steal here for South Central. Well, playing defense Bunch there. with a spin had it stripped out of his hands. That would have been a nice move. Here's a move ahead to Husky who gives it up to Ellis who had it blocked from behind, but it's a foul. And the foul is going to be on Bennett. Bennett didn't like the foul. It was the arm coming across. A little bit of the body. Yeah, I would say definitely some body contact yeah. there on that knockout. Stay with it us after foul. the game as we'll name the play of the game. Brought to you by IKORCC. Learn more at IKORCC.com. Ellis rattles that one around and can't drop it home. And that's the frustration. We were talking about knocking down the free throw right away. He already missed one. He is calm, cool, collected, gets to the score, but... One bad call, it could go to your head. He needs to just slow down and get that muscle memory back. There you right go. There. You, need to watch, you need to watch it go down first, and then it, then it kind of starts yep. a whole trend. So we'll see how that plays out. 
Going high and goes over the backboard. That goes just a little bit high. And that's one of those situations there for, for Haschel. He's anticipating the contact. So he's really not going for the shot. He's going up, just putting up a shot, assuming that, that he's, he's going to he's, he's get the contact. And so he went a little too strong. And then you saw Caden Pepper flying and his wingspan just trying to get up and over him. Uh, it is. It's hard to attack the basket uh, when you have the size and athleticism uh, Westville has. So that's just one of those those little minor details that I, I do think kind of play a factor. Long range shot put up for Westville, no good. Rebound though, and it'll be a foul against Westville. The foul is gonna be on Cody Brooks who has checked in the game. A little push from behind. He yeah, didn't have that plane going up for the rebound. And good job crashing, but gotta be under control. All right, it'll be Guevara to bring it up the floor for the Satellites. Pushing up ahead to Newburn. Gives out to Haschel for three. That's just a little bit long. Cannon flying down the floor. Little dribble from behind. Turns, fires, and puts it home. He is a really a good guard to watch. He, he, he can see the floor. He can score. He can pass. He is certainly not afraid to take any kind of contact. Feeding it down low. Giving a little contact to Bunce. It goes out of bounds, and it'll be... Westville basketball, and I think they're checking on Hannon to make sure he's okay. He was down. Just got hit in the side. He wants to stay in the game. So it's a five, or it's a one-point lead, excuse me, for South Central right now. Westville trying to change the score. Gives to Hannon on the left side. Looking to drive. South Central with that 2-3 zone, just trying to uh, slow things down. But South Central does a good job getting back out to close out um, the shooters. And they stop that penetration just right there like with Hannon. Pepper trying to put that one up. It's no good up top. Feeding it down the floor. Haschel going up, laying it in. That's already eight points for Sam Haschel, the senior. And the three-point lead. Ellis trying to tie it. No good here in the first quarter. A lot of action here with under a minute to play in the opening quarter. Yeah. Bunce. Good high-scoring game. Guevara giving it to Haschel, who wanted it way earlier. And had he gotten it earlier, it would be open for a three. Newburn with 38 seconds. Lost it. Got it back after the strip. Giving it to Bunce, who tries to put it home. No good. Rebound by Kenny Pepper. Ellis bringing it up the floor, far side, in the paint, just in front of the free throw line, and good. So would you hold for the last shot here, or just try to keep running? You look for the good shot, I think. Um, I think you you honestly... So we've got a double team there on Guevara. Rolls out to the wing, seven seconds, trying to feed it inside. Gives it back out to Guevara for a three, and rattles it in! There it is, the good shot at the end of the quarter by Guevara. He'll have five points this quarter, a well, couple I may, of rebounds. I may be out of breath by the time we get to the end of this one. All right, you're watching the PCS Channel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Did you know? Wow, they'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area? Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strike and Van Till, now you know. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges. Everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Welcome back to game night here in the PCC. Special thanks to Berkey Family Farms for their continued support of athletics in the Porter County Conference. 
Stop in and visit them at 205 South Main Street in Counts, and you can also check them out online at BerkeyFarms.com. Berkey Family Farms since 1919. Hannon trying to feed it down low to Pepper, and it was blocked away by Newburn. Newburn saw that coming, got his hand out there, knew he couldn't really grab it, and he just swatted that away. Oh, that's just as good. No basket means that they're still in the lead here by four. Ellis pulls up for a shot. It was tipped. Trying to pick it up underneath was Husky. Couldn't get it. So here comes South Central now. Bennett was bringing it up the floor, and it's going to be a turnover here for South Central. And that's if you're South Central, you have a little lead. You can't get turnover happy. And Correct. it's a hard thing to do because you're amped up, ready to go up and down the floor, but you have to have that patience as well. Hannon waiting for something to develop here. He's calling out the play, getting around the screen. Tries to feed to the roll. What a put up for Caden Pepper. I really like that play call there. Getting around the screen, the roll right to the basket. He knew it was there. He had it timed perfectly. Just was probably a little bit too close to the basket to make a, a, a careful shot. Yeah, Caden was just, Caden Pepper was just under that basket, but it was a good, good call to come up, set that pick. Hannon didn't see anything. Knocking it down, Caden Pepper. on the free throw now. So gets the free throw. The foul, by the way, was on Alex Newburn. His first. Got team, they have four. I've only marked down three, so what do I know? That one rattles around, will not fall home. Two for five from the line for Westfield tonight. So far in this one, obviously we're just starting the second quarter. Far side, this is Grass, stolen away by Hannon. Hannon moves up the floor, lays it up, too strong, trying to dunk it, won't get it to fall. Loose ball, picked up by South Central. They got it to Haschel, who almost loses it, is able to regain composure. Hale for a three, and it falls! I mentioned it that Coach Spear is going to try to get the best as we have a foul on the floor here. And the foul is on Colton Bennett. That is his second. They have the team for five. And checking in is Bunce. And Bennett will check out of the game. So Hannon here will inbound underneath his own basket, just to the left, trying to feed off to Pepper, who lays it right in. Really nice play call there on the inbounds play. Good set to get you two quick points. Newburn gives off to Haschel, fakes to his right, gives off now to Grass, penetrates, dishes out to Newburn for three. They have been three happy. This one loose, but picked up by Kenny Pepper. Hannon flying down the floor, feeds down underneath to Husky. Picked up now, Pepper, jump shot is good. Caden having himself a really impressive game. Two point game now. Ashill getting around the defense here from Husky. In the lane, looking to find someone to pass it to as he picked up his dribble. Here's another hail shot. Rattles around, won't fall. We got bodies hitting the floor. It's tipped out and it'll be Westville basketball. Man, what action we got it here. Is. It's back and forth, and the teams, both teams are doing a pretty good job, getting good looks, the shot. Um, but the passing really is creating those good shots. Um, Hannon attacking the basket and having a decent boot ball movement down low, low. There's just nothing like PCC basketball, in my opinion. It Hannon is, with a jump it's shot. Exciting. It's the hidden gem in the region and in the state. A lot of people don't 100%. see like the two way, one A schools, and it is. It's a good. A uh, lot of physical contact there. We have already seen these officials letting them play. Well, a lot of contact from Husky on on Haschel. Newburn going up, had it blocked by Pepper, and they're going to say it's out of bounds, and it'll stay with South Central. We have a couple of check ins. Now for South Central, Guevara will check back in, and we've got Colin Ward checking in for South Central as well, giving breathers to Newburn, Newborn, uh, Newburn, excuse me, and Hale. Good reset by the satellites, I think. Guevara does a good job defensively and has that offensive touch. Given the corner to Guevara, long range shot on the floor, picked up by Hannon, feeding ahead to Caden. Caden given to Husky, little far, puts it back up though, no good. 
Yeah, that shot didn't even curl any bit. It was just no, straight up vertical. Straight up. This one tipped out of bounds by Pepper. And that's a hard shot. He's had a couple of times um, Husky's been right underneath the basket. He had a good pass to uh, Pepper to score, getting the assist, but that way he just did, had a hard, hard look. Ashel for two this time, knocked out. Really tough defense here. Pepper bringing it up the floor now, giving off to Hannon. As we said, not afraid to really penetrate and drive up there. And it'll be a foul against South Central here. Looks like they said 22, which will be Guevara. Be which will be second, I his believe. second, yes. That's the foul trouble. It, it hurts South Central. Guevara going to Franklin to play football um, next year. He's just athletic. He can play good defense. Uh, he's usually the point of their uh, press. So you don't want to get him into foul trouble here in the first half. And it knocks down the first free throw, so that helps the percentages for Westville as a team. Stay with us after the game as we'll name the Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game, brought to you by the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. And that's just an errant pass, an unforced turnover there for South Central. And you would hate for those things to start creeping into their heads. Yes. Because they've that's, been playing so well. You go into these streaks and you don't want to have a turnover streak. It's how you're going to come back now defensively to uh, get a stop. And I was just lo looking over at Coach Spear. That's definitely one of the things that he was seeing there, the frustration. And that shot blocked Pepper, but he's able to put it right back home. So the lead grows to four. I, I believe this is the largest lead for either team in the game at four. No, we had a five. Oh, South seven, Central seven, you're right. Seven. Yep, yep, seven, you're right. So maybe the lead for, the biggest lead for Westville then. Trying to get around Ward. Ward had it poked away, trying to get it back. Ellis feeding to Hannon, but they turned the ball over this time. So we're seeing a little, they start cleaning these up on either end. This is going to be a real interesting game, but this gives South Central an opportunity now. Yeah, that's, if you're looking at this, Westville's getting frustrated. They want to push the ball, but... South Central's getting back defensively, causing them turnovers. So on the half-court side of things, just slow down, get make good passes if you're the satellites. And the nice thing about the intensity that we're seeing in this game both ways and the physicality of this game both ways, this really gets you ready as Ellis going all the way up and getting the foul as well. And they are going up with major intensity. The foul is on, I believe it was on Bunce. And that was a tough shot by yes. Ellis going in, and he hit the ball, uh, or hit the ground uh, pretty hard. Yeah, he went right into the student section, and that's not a friendly student section for them either. No, but... They helped him up. They did help him up. They had good sportsmanship. That's now, I think the officials... giving him a little breather, because he did, he hit it hit hard. Yeah, he did. That's a seventh team foul, by the way. So that'll be an automatic. Well, he did get the he got the bucket, so that's an automatic one free throw here. Heap goes up for three. It's offline. But the fact of the intensity, as I was trying to say, of this one is this really gets you ready for sectionals. Absolutely, you're ready to go. It's it's your final game here. If you're South Central in the gym for your seniors, but. It puts things into perspective that March is right around the corner, and if you like playing basketball, you're going to give it all on the floor. We've already seen Hoosier hysteria start on the girls' side. Now the March Madness will start next week with sectionals for boys. Grass giving it up to Kimmel. Ashel pulls up just in front of the free throw line. That rattles around, won't go. Rebounded, though, by Brooks, and we'll have a foul here. Reach and in by uh, Grass. So Braden Grass called for his first foul. That'll be the team's eighth, so it should be a one and one situation here, and they uh, will. Bonus. That's the eighth team foul. We'll give you that whole schedule for the North Judson sectional again around halftime. 
For those of you that may be wanting to take the drive over to North Judson. Brand new gym floor over there. Getting the host of section. First free throw knocked down for Cody, Cody Brooks. You said they got a new floor? New floor. Oh, look yeah. at that. Off the mark for Brooks on that one. So it's now a seven point lead. And the threes that were falling for South Central not falling now. Ellis trying to fake, dishes out. Brooks for three, it's no good, but Pepper right underneath couldn't get that layup to go. And so South Central picking up here. We got guys with their hands up. Yeah, there's a lot of physicality in this game and this officiating crew letting them play. And it's coming off of rebounds, a couple of bodies here and there. Newburn will go to the line. And the foul is on Caden Pepper, his first. You have a, a couple of uh, bench, a couple of guys coming off the bench here, and I don't know if they're not necessarily looking to score. They're open, but those two quick threes, it can just slow down and play some basketball. You have two more quarters here. Knocking the first one down for Newburn. Shoots 55% from the line is Newburn. Puts that one up, rattles around. No good, but South Central gets the board. He goes for the three now is Newburn. It's no good. Ellis comes down with the rebound. A little crossover move. Feeding over to Pepper, looking for somebody open. Gets Hannon. Satellite settling into their 2-3 zone. Make sure you're watching Brooks back there, down at the baseline. Hannon stopping at the elbow. A little too wild on the pass there, so a turnover for Westville. Gives South Central another opportunity here down six. Yeah, this is where those, those turnovers uh, can pile up. Newburn fakes, tries to drive, can't find anything. Gives it up now to Grass for three. It's offline. Ellis comes down with the rebound. He's looking ahead. He's going to find Pepper, who loses the ball. But he's going to go back up, and it's blocked, but it'll be a foul. Tom Cool collected, missed it, came back with it. I have him down for seven rebounds already, so he's doing his job. Grass called for his second foul of the game, so that's nine team fouls here in this in this first half. First one knocked down for Kenny Pepper. That's his fifth point of the game. Keaton's got nine. Knocking them both down. From South Central here. Down eight. Kimmel. Eric Welsh in the game here for South Central as well. Coach Spear really using a lot of his bench here. Hashel putting it up. Too strong hitting the back iron there. We'll have a foul. And that'll, probably, that'll be against Hashel, I believe. Yeah, it'll be Hashel trying to reach in there. And it was a good attack to the basket, just not, not falling. So that's the 10th team foul. So an automatic two shots for Westville. And it'll be... Caden Pepper to go to the line. He's one of two. Knocks down the first. Ten points for the game. Yeah, with 117 to go in the first half. Not only is Westville in the double bonus, all of a sudden that lead is really starting to grow. Now to 10 for Westville. Satellites never wanted the first quarter to end. No, they, they were seeing that hoop. And then we'll have a foul here. Don't foul a jump shooter there, Cody Brooks. So it is against Brooks. And they're saying he it was on it. the it's on the floor, so there so there is no three free throws coming. He he had his hand up to start saying three, but then 
got sorted out that it was after the shot and it was on the box out. It's a little bit of a tough break there for South Central, but they at least get the ball. They give it out to Newburn now. Ashell's kind of been quiet here this second quarter. 55 seconds to play. Given to Newburn. That's the defense by Ellis. He has been on Haschel, making him work for every possession that he's getting. Feeding it down to Bunce, who's really fighting hard. Had it blocked up top by Pepper. That's just a height advantage there. Trying to steal that one and block that one. But Kenny says, you're not stopping me today. Well, tough assignment by Newburn down low. So Haschel bringing it up the floor now. Gives it off to Welsh. Now to Newburn. 13 seconds remaining in this opening half. Newburn trying to fight. Gives up. Now gives to Haschel on the cut and lays it in. And that's the type of mindset the satellites might need to get into. And it hits the backboard there on that final possession of the first half. So we go to the half. 36-26 your score. You're watching the PCS channel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean-to-cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. Lights Team Sports in Valparaiso is a leader in athletics apparel and equipment sales. With in-house production, including screen printing, trophies, embroidery, and more, Blights can help you to create the perfect look. For more information, visit them online at teamblights.com. Blights Team Sports in Valparaiso, where the athletes shop. Are the freezing temperatures of winter starting to give you the blues? Can't wait till summer? Well, summer has arrived at the 2022 Lake County Boat Show. Come on out to the Lake County Boat Show at the Lake County Fairgrounds, running February 25th through the 27th. Check out the 2022 models from Sandpan, Hurricane, Bayliner, and more. From canoes to kayaks, wave runners to pontoons, you'll find it all. For more info, check out the website, lakecountyboatshow.com. We'll see you there, and don't forget the sunblock. The team of sports medicine experts at Orthopedic Specialists of Northwest Indiana is committed to getting athletes back in the game with a focus on not only helping patients recover from injuries, but helping improve athletic performance to prevent injuries. Orthopedic Specialists provides the most advanced, comprehensive care to their patients. To learn more about all Orthopedic Specialists can do to help rehab and prevent athletic injuries, visit them on the web at osni.org or call them at 219-923-3300. Orthopedic specialists of Northwest Indiana, providing world-class care to Northwest Indiana for over 20 years. Did you know? They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till. Now you know. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's, the insurance professionals in Highland, Merrillville, and Michigan City. Welcome back to the PCS channel here in the Region Sports Network. Michael Brenner here along with Matt Wellson. As we got... Uh, Little dance competition is going on here at South Central. We've got a good game. The score says it's a 10 point lead for Westville, but really that first quarter was really kind of dominated by South Central to start, and then kind of the second quarter deflated them a little bit. They never wanted that first quarter to end. 
No, that, they were on fire. Uh, satellites were shooting threes, attacking the basket, getting the roll to go in. But then, honestly, it was foul trouble. Um, satellites had a bunch of fouls, some starters going back to the bench, and uh, that kind of slowed things down. Westville able to push that ball into transition mode and get up 10 here. Yeah, absolutely. We got Ellis with 11 points, Caden Pepper with 11 points leading the way for Westville. Kenny Pepper with eight. Uh, and then Gavin Hannon with six. Cody Brooks also in there with one point. I got Sam Hampshire with 10 leading the way for South Central. Newburn with six. Ward with two. Hale with a big three. And then Guevara with five. So a lot of uh, sharing of the basket, letting, letting other guys kind of get involved here for both teams, really. It is, and, and that's one of the things if you are South Central, you have Haschel scoring 10 points, but Newburn and Guevara, that's how you can win that game is when they pick up those uh, like 8 to 10 point uh, game there. So if you get them rocking and rolling, cut that lead down. Well, it really was a tale of two quarters because we saw South Central really hitting a lot of threes as yes. well. I mean, they were that, on yes. fire from beyond the three-point line. And then all of a sudden, they kind of cooled off in the second half. So we'll see if they try to pick that back up. Do they continue to go for that? Do they start to drive to the lane? Where they? I mean, we'll have to just see how that plays out late in the game. The last couple of uh, possessions, they did a good job of just running a good set and getting a couple of good shots. That's how Haschel scored his last two points. So yeah, we'll absolutely. see how they do it in the second yeah, half. Yeah, I'll be interested to see kind of what kind of defense Westville comes up with that one. Before we take a break here real quick, we want to send our condolences out from the Region Sports Network to the Munster community. Uh, coach Schenken obviously passing away, longtime baseball coach over at Munster, and I'm just getting goosebumps even saying that. Such a, a great human being, a great coach. I know a lot of people in that community and a lot of former players and family members and all that, they're in mourning for sure. Uh, glad he was inducted into their Munster Hall of Fame uh, just recently, so uh, but definitely condolences out to uh, the entire Munster community as they are dealing with that loss, and especially, of course, uh, prayers and all that to the Schenken family. So definitely a tough loss in the region. Baseball season will not be the same this coming either without him. So definitely send condolences out there. All right, we'll be back in just a few moments with the rest of the second half. You're watching the PCS channel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. From schools to stadiums, hospitals, and bridges, Everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean to cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. Lights Team Sports in Valparaiso is a leader in athletics apparel and equipment sales. With in-house production including screen printing, trophies, embroidery, and more, Blyce can help you to create the perfect look. For more information, visit them online at teamblyce.com. Blyce Team Sports in Valparaiso, where the athletes shop. The team of sports medicine experts at Orthopedic Specialists of Northwest Indiana is committed to getting athletes back in the game with a focus on not only helping patients recover from injuries, but helping improve athletic performance to prevent injuries. Orthopedic Specialists provides the most advanced, comprehensive care to their patients. To learn more about all Orthopedic Specialists can do to help rehab and prevent athletic injuries, visit them on the web at osni.org or call them at 219-923-3300. Orthopedic Specialists of Northwest Indiana, providing world-class care to Northwest Indiana for over 20 years. Are the freezing temperatures of winter starting to give you the blues? Can't wait till summer? Well, summer has arrived at the 2022 Lake County Boat Show. Come on out to the Lake County Boat Show at the Lake County Fairgrounds running February 25th through the 27th. Check out the 2022 models from Sandpan, Hurricane, Bayliner, and more. 
From canoes to kayaks, wave runners to pontoons, you'll find it all. For more info, check out the website, lakecountyboatshow.com. We'll see you there, and don't forget the sunblock. Welcome back to the PCS channel here on the Region Sports Network. Ten-point lead for Westville here at the half. We'll see how third quarter plays out here, but a special thanks to Berkey Family Farms for their continued support of athletics in the Porter County Conference. Stop in and visit them at 205 South Main Street in Couts. You can also check them out online at berkeyfarms.com. Berkey Family Farms since 1919. Actually, next week will be a golden opportunity because... Uh, they're hosting one of the sectional sites, so good opportunities there. Yes, absolutely. Always have to stop in and get something good to eat down at Berkey Family Farms. And I should have asked, we got Nathan Laird here with us. Zach Miller working the camera back there, doing a great job. I should have asked Nathan uh, before we came back here, do we have all of the sectional matchups on the website yet? Okay, they're all there posted for people to see. So if you want to see where, you know, maybe your favorite team, if you're just kind of checking out here on a Friday night, where your favorite team plays, uh, who they play, and how the bracket looks. It's also, you know, IHSAA came out with that blind draw this past Sunday, so uh, plenty, of, plenty of places you can go check that out. But uh, definitely the Region Sports Network would be a great spot to go find all of that. All right, start of the second half here, Westville and South Central. Hey, Brandon Grass going to be in the starting lineup for South Central with Sam Haschel. Trying to get all the numbers down here. Newburn. We've got Guevara out there. And then uh, Justin Bunce out there as well. And I believe this, the starting five for Westville. we got a little interesting maneuver there against Westville. And Ellis. Ellis got hooked Ellis was, there. It was saying some stuff, and I, I could see just by his... By the wording of his mouth, that uh, there was definitely some language shown toward the official. Thankfully, the official was walking away, and both the other officials went and said, you know, something to him, like, "Hey, you need to yeah. calm that down a little bit." And he wasn't happy with that call. I mean, it was a it was a foul, and it's a second of the game, and he's kind of been playing with some intensity here. Yes, and we've we've already said that the the officials are letting these guys play, and we'll have a tie up here. Oh, wow. And that, that's just the mentality of the game. You had a good first half, you're up 10. A bad call cannot just ruin your entire flow of the game. That's what can define you as a player. And that's honestly what teams into the sectional will look at. Like, hey, get into this kid's head right at the beginning to and, shut him down. And definitely right there, we'll see a foul there. It might be a push, and that's where... Nobody's going to be against South Central. Be against uh, Bunce. Yep, and it was Bunce. And Coach Eubanks is talking with the same official that, that made, obviously, that call on Ellis. Just trying to make sure that, the, you know, things are good, as this one put down by Kenny Pepper. And, it is, it, and you had that physicality of the play in the first half. That one blocked. Third by block Ke of the game for Caden Pepper. Fair enough to say if it's being blocked, it's by one of the Peppers. Yes. <laughs> and there's still another one, Caleb Pepper, that could check in there as well. Haschel pulling up for three. Way short. Picked up, though, by Grass. Given to Newburn, who gives that one off. Ellis picks it up, though. He has got eyes ahead. He's going downfield and putting it up and putting it home. Tough shot by Haschel to start that sequence. He's fading away and then shooting. Into the second half, you have a, you don't have that jumper as you did in the first quarter. And we'll see what they call tie up there. Is that what? So it should be South Central South ball. South Central if it was, ball. Yep, on the tie up. But you can see the athleticism in Ellis just taking the ball back down and getting that layup. Good defender. Newbird gets that inbound there, trying to find. Somebody cut into the basket, but a lot of peppers in the way. Ashel moving to his left, and we might see a blocking foul. Yep, we will against Husky here. Yeah, you had the screen right there, bit. and yep. he ran right into it. Uh, 
Given off, Haschel pulling up for three. Knocks it in. Oh, it is a two. Excuse me, Haschel with a two, but that's He's a big bucket. The line and that's what they need to look at. They have good looks coming off set plays. They'll have a traveling call against Kenny Pepper. If South Central comes back, it's going to be through those higher percentage shots and then coming back, stopping the transition, but playing good zone defense. I must have said something. My buddy Dylan was sitting right next to me. Now he, he took off and ran down the, down the bleachers a little bit oh, there. Man. I must have said something. Ellis looking downfield again up against Haschel. Behind the back move, going all the way up and putting it home. What a powerful Julian Ellis. move by Ellis. That might be a good candidate for our IKORCC play of the game because he also gets an and one out of it. He's done that twice now, going to the basket under control, and you could just see the athleticism uh, that he has going and attacking. Grass was called for his third foul of the game. So Ellis can't get it to fall. Ellis struggling from the line today. One of five from the line. We got the ball on the ground. We'll have a tie-up call here. I believe this will be Westville basketball. Colton Bennett checking in for South Central here. So Westville with the basketball, 42-28 lead. Give us to Pepper. Kenny, then Caden, now Hannon. And he would get around Guevara there. Yeah, Guevara. He's willing to take him, and they're going to say no shot, but yeah, it's a traveling travel. violation. That's one thing. Guevara is just as athletic there on the floor for the satellites. Yeah, very good with his feet. Good defender. Has good defensive IQ. Playing with a couple of fouls now, so. And we'll see a foul here. Yep. As Hasho was moving forward, so it would be another foul against Husky. Had the hook with the hip. And South Central ball on the sideline. I was looking at the numbers that we got here. I mentioned, and I don't mean to call him out totally, but Ellis struggling from the line. He's doing great everywhere else on the floor, just struggling from the line. He's about an 80% free throw shooter, and he's one of five from the line tonight. So certainly an area that he's you know, telling himself, even though if I have the best game of my life, if I'm one of five from the line, we'll have another bucket here. This time is for Bunce. Bunce going up strong. And taking the contact and making sure he's not going to get blocked. He did a good job down at the post. We were mentioning Ellis. That's his third foul. Eubanks going to be keeping him in. He just told him, he's like, you got three, play smart. Well, and he was just kind of, the, the, the official and, and Ellis kind of just looked at each other and they kind of just said, okay, I got you. Yeah, yep. you know, okay. Shot was in, or not in for Bunce on that one. The, the basket was good, but the free throw was not. So Hannon here with it. Hannon looking in the corner, finds Pepper. So we talked about that waiting very early on in the game, and they're a patient team. Yes, and that's, that's it. You, you Husky pulling up for three, can't hit it. Rebound to Bennett. You Down have a lead. You don't need a score. Newburn for three in the corner. Hits the backboard. Haschel there Haschel. to get it and put it back. Offensive rebound. Put back. That could be a candidate for our IKORCC play of the game. Brings it within 10 now. Last time on this floor. Give to Pepper. Blocked. Good block at the but ball. But a foul on Newburn. But with the body, he's got that... Uh, call so that's hard to get that plane when you have an athlete like Caden Pepper crashing to the basket free throw is down for Caden Pepper gives him 12 points now in the game Caden Pepper Gets that one to fall as well. He's having a great night from the charity strike. He's made four in a row. Five all together, five of six. Give on the side here, dishing back out to Haschel for three. 
Hits the front iron. Pepper gives up to Hannon. A little bit off cue there, but he's able to control it. Careful behind the back. Finds someone to feed it to. It's Ellis on the baseline. Dishes back out. Caden Pepper going up. Putting it in. Good ball movement by Westville. Starting off with Hannon. 5'7 frame, but he can get that ball to any of his teammates, and Westville gets those two points. And that'll be a third foul on Husky. And I one, one really could argue there that that foul kind of could be on, on Haschel, kind of with that Hash little that chicken wing that kind of yes. pushed the... And, and that's where Haschel needs to be careful there offensively. Defensively, you have to have that arm's length and use your, your body to... Uh, move your defender. Yeah, I feel like that foul really could have gone either way. Yes. They went with the block. Hale, who had a big three earlier in this one. Trying to keep that possession alive there. Bennett, guys all over him. Gives up. Hale with the jump shot. So we'll delay a game called here against Colton Bennett. Knocking the ball yeah. out. I don't know how intentional it was, but you do have to call that. We'll have a check in here coming up. Lautenbach checking in for South Central. For South Central, it's Braden Lautenbach. And Newburn will come out. Not a bad substitution, leading the uh, post. He just has to play big, be talking. And Lundbach, 6'3", freshman though. They have him listed as a freshman, I should say. Hannon stops, gives to Pepper. And if you're a freshman playing varsity at the end, any he's, time he's, there. And he was on the ground trying to fight that one. That one yeah. poked out of bounds. That one poked out of bounds by uh, Excuse me, I believe that was by Hale. I, uh, no, I'm sorry, it was uh, poked out by, by Husky. Let's get my tens mixed up yes. there. Tens are wild in this one. Give to Bennett in the corner, drives to his right. Had a little poked away there. Give to Bunce. Now to the freshman, putting it up. Can't get it to go. I don't think it was tipped. I think he just kind of anticipated a, the yeah, arm in the a, way. He was away from the block and... We'll have a travel against Ellis here. Sliding his foot. Yeah, a little try and go for the Euro trouble. step, not getting it. And I think he would rather take that than any kind of like physical contact oh, yeah. there and any foul call. Yeah. He's playing with three right now. If you're going to take something, take the turnover. No foul against it. 2.35 to go. Hannon pokes this one. And we'll have a foul here against... South Central and Coach Spears saying, you did that. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, get back on defense. Stop your man. So that fouls on Dylan Hale. And Hannon is a hard hard guard to, uh, to stop. I mean, he got the steal coming back the other way. He can shift it into that next gear. And I know our, our cameras probably aren't picking this up, but as soon as Hale gets to the bench, Spears telling him, this is what you have yes. to do instead. I, I'm telling you, if you're a South Central fan, you have got a good coach. I know it, this isn't the season that maybe you were wanting or hoping so far, but I'm telling you, you got a right, you got the right guy coaching your team. It's the teaching of the game is what's the impressive yes, part. Yes, that, that's, that's what he does so well, in my opinion. Hannon steals that one. It still goes in. So much contact, but Hannon still gets the bucket, and no foul called out of that as well. I mean, we heard a thud it somewhere. Both. I don't know if that was the basket or what. But. Newburn and Hannon hit the ground. It was a good athletic play. Hannon got that to roll in. He'll try it again. Hannon throws that one up. It's no good. Rebound by Newburn. Ball is on the ground, tipping it out. And that'll be a backcourt violation. So Coach Eubanks is saying they never had possession. I think he actually might have an argument I, there. I, I think, I, you know. That the so the establishment is that back, you have, yeah. yeah, you have to have all three on that side. And you know, I think Coach Eubanks has got a 
got a solid argument there that they never really had full possession after that tip. So far, it's, you can't call the back the backcourt violation. Right. No, agreed. Bennett for the long range shot. It's a little too long. Tips out of bounds, and that'll be tipped out by Brooks. And he is greeted nicely by the student section over there. All, all nice words, I'm sure. All nice words. <laughs> Brooks will check out, and it'll be Ellis back on the floor. Ward going for the inbound. It's long range. Got to go back, but that's fine. Bunce giving to Newburn for a three. Knocks it in. That's a big three knocked down here. His first points of the second half. He's got nine now as Newburn. Makes it an 11-point game. Ellis trying to answer. Rebound comes down to Bunce. He brings it up the floor. Giving it to Guevara in the corner. Bennett. Finds a whole plethora of Westville players right in front of him. Guevara putting up for three. It's long range. Re rebound comes down to Pepper. Hannon behind the back. Keeps his dribble. This kid's so impressive to watch. Yes. The cut by Husky. And now you got Newborn trying to fight. And they're going to say he's going to stay with South Central. He had guys draped all over him down at this end of the basket. It was good defense by Westville. Uh, just staying that arm's length away. 44.8. We'll have Brooks in for a check-in. A couple of starters out for Westfield. Get a breather this final 44.8, trying to steal to go to the third. We're in the third quarter. The board has third quarter still marked, or second quarter still marked on there. So 40 seconds remain here in the third. Bennett. To Newburn, who has had a really, really good game. Uh, nine points, but really just doing a lot. Some of that blue-collar kind of work for the South Central team today. Yes. Down, to, down to 20 seconds yeah, he's, in the third. He's the type of player that will put the H at hustle for yes. sure. Yes, oh yeah. They're going to hold for the final shot. Colin Ward with it now. Nine seconds. Ward turning to his left. Seven seconds. Five Still turning, has to shoot, down to two. Newburn is up, and it's no good, but the foul. Is the foul going to be, will they shoot free throws? They should. The whistle the foul before was before the buzzer, so the foul should have hit. So everyone will go back to their respective benches, and it'll be Newborn, Newburn to shoot two as the time expired here. And it was, it was decent. Defense by Brooks um, just hooked him with the body, and and that's Brooks's third foul, by the way. Free throw, no good for Newburn. That's where Newburn needs to connect there to make it a ten-point game here if he connects, and he can't. So it'll be an eleven-point lead for Westville at the end of three. You're watching the PCS channel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. From schools to stadiums, hospitals, and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Did you know? They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till. Now you know. Start of the fourth quarter here at South Central High School. is It's an 11-point game. It's been nitty-gritty all the way down to the end. Michael Brenner here along with Matt Wellson. we got Zach Miller working the camera and some guy named Nathan Laird working the controls over there. The Nathan Laird. I do call him the Switch Army Knife of the... See, see now, he, now he's kissing up because he got two shirts today. 
<laughs> Pulse on the floor. Guys hitting the deck. Hashel with the jumper, no good. Tipped out. It goes out of bounds. It'll be South Central basketball. And going in hard into the... Good into hustle the, by Bovard. Sam Bovard. He's trying to knock his knee back in place there. Did you see him bang his he knee? He did. There? He's <laughs> like, let's get this let's, back. Let's, put this, let's pop this back in. That's what the hustle you want off your bench, though. And we'll have a foul on Kenny Pepper there. And I think, you know, he kind of coming from behind and getting that block there. It may have been clean. May have gotten a little bit of a hand there. But I feel like I don't care who you are. That's, that's a foul you're going to call regardless whether it really was all ball or not. That's, it, it, the, the optics of it don't yes. look good from where he was standing. Correct. Only his first foul, though, so he's good. That free throw rattles up and down for Newburn, who had just missed two at the end of the third quarter. So now it feels good to have that one fall down. Two of five so far from the, night, for, from the line. Makes it a 10-point game. Now makes it a nine-point game. So South Central coming back in this one here. And this is the wake-up for the Satellites, playing good, solid defense, get a couple of stops. If you're Westville, they do a good job being patient. Just attack that basket. And we talked about it earlier, this intensity, this, this physical play that the refs are letting him play at. This, this is golden for the start of sectionals, really. That one blocked up top. It'll be a foul. A couple of guys jumping up there, though, so who will it be against is the question. I feel like they're going to get Newburn. They do. Yep. Newburn that's his third. Was a little bit higher and came down with his arm, and that's who they'll call it on. But good concentration by Bovard catching that ball and going up strong. So Bovard to the line. Trying to get his first point with 7.15 here in the fourth. And easy peasy. Stay with us after the game as we'll name tonight's peak performers celebrating the best performances on the court for both teams. And we got a little bit of a delay of game. We do a, maybe that's what, uh, okay, so when, when he went into we, the, we joked uh, that he was trying to pop his knee back in place, but he was wiping the blood. He did try to pop his knee back in place. And is Eubank saying that he doesn't have a sub to check in? Or it's maybe asking for somebody he's to... He's just looking to wipe the blood well, off. Well, yeah, he's got to get the blood off of him. So but if he comes out, he'll have to come out. So he's out. looking for the trainer to bring to clean it up. Yeah. Yeah, so we joked about that popping knee back in, but he's got a little bit of a little bit of a scrape, so he knew that right away. Well, this seems like a good time to tell you to make sure you stay with us after the game. This will name the play of the game presented by IKORCC, the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. Now, Hannon gets to shoot free throws now? Is that how that works? The sub that was injured or had blood on their uniform knee came out, so you had the substitution, and he will shoot that free throw. Okay, so Hannon knocks it down. So will, does that technically count then for... Bovard? Han no, Hannon. It counts for Hannon. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, did uh, did Spear get to pick who shot the free throw? Is that how that worked? I think Hannon was coming in anyway. Okay. So, I think he just went in the... Okay. He was subbing for him. So. Gotcha. Yeah. And Westville foul here against Husky. That is his fourth of the game, so he'll have to check out. And it'll be Caden Pepper to check in. And I'll say Husky, that's the blue-collar mentality that we've been talking about. His stats aren't there, but he is the one hustling. He's putting up, um, rebound, getting rebound, getting some steals, and he's the one up playing that point on the defense for Westville. So he's had a pretty good game. Yeah, absolutely. Hashel knocks the first one down, brings it within 10 here with 7.01 to go. And two for two. Ellis with it now, gives off to Hannon. We're under seven minutes to go in this one. It's a nine-point game. It's been good, really, from the onset of this one here at South Central. In sectional start next week, Westville will take on Boone Grove Tuesday night, March 1st. And then South Central will play the second game of the evening over at North Judson. They'll take on LaVille. 
they, if, if they were to advance, they will get the winner of the North Judson Career Academy game. Unselfish basketball here. This one poked away against Pepper, and we'll see who the foul's on. And it's against Newburn, which is going to be his fourth. So It was a good pass by Ellis. Spacing wasn't quite there to connect, but if you're uh, Alex Newburn, you got four fouls. Use them, but make sure you leave it on the floor. Short on the first free throw attempt. And I, I, I jinxed Caden Pepper. He was having such a good go from the line, and, and he misses that one. But he gets that one. Got the ball. Ball. That's the reverse announcer's jinx there. Newburn will come out, and it'll be a check in for Braden Grass, who has three fouls of his own. And again, I, I'm going to sound like a dead horse here when I talk about how, you know, Eric Spear being the guy for South Central. He was just over here talking to Ellis and just kind of shooting the breeze there with, a, with an opposing player and a yes. guy that I'm sure he has watched over the years. As Haschel pulling up for three, a little long. Ellis coming down with the rebound, but I, I know Spear respects the gameplay of Ellis. So they were just kind of shooting the oh, breeze, yeah. smiling, making jokes. Yep. Just tell him, hey, take it easy. Let's get this uh, lead here. <laughs> He's like, hey, go a little easier on us, will you? It's our senior night. And Coach Eubanks has been doing a really great job here. This is his best season uh, here with Westville. Uh, he never had more than 10 wins the previous three seasons, and now he's got 13, looking for number 14 here tonight. So he's had a really good season. This one intercepted. That one blocked up top, and they're going to say it's a goaltend. So the basket will be good to Bunce. And just to talk about the coaches, like you have people that are just on chair coaches sort of deal, you know. It's hard to get a team chemistry together, get the talent going. So both teams here are doing a good job of it. And to keep, to keep my job, I, Nathan uh, texted me asking me a certain question. I am not going to respond to that, sir, while on the air. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll fill you in a little bit later in the next like, long time out here with 5.29 to go. You know, I used to think like, working with Rico is always like, a problem, but now working with, working with Nathan is kind of uh, causing a little pandemonium. I feel like the answer to your question, Nathan, is the docile tones of me. That, that would be the answer to your question. Monotone. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been referred to as monotone before. No, not, not, no, no. <laughs> Just ask any of my students. Hannon. Almost losing that one. Able to keep. Brooks picks this one up. And we'll see a foul here against Bunce. And he's going to be... Questioning that call there, things didn't, thinking he really didn't do much. He and was just excited going for the ball in the play, but it was the body got him. And, uh, he he's, to, he's still asking that on me? Yep. Yes, he's, sir. got to <laughs> relax, get down to your block, and get the rebound. All right, it'll be Cody Brooks at the charity stripe here. Missing on the first attempt. Both teams in the bonus at this point. Ashell pulling up from long range three, still short. That's something that he's had a hard, you know, after that first quarter, he has just not been connecting nearly as much. He hasn't hit one since that first quarter, if I'm not mistaken. He had two right away, and he hasn't hit one since. And it has been Westville's defense. They have been on him, and he has to work for every shot. Ellis going all the way down, and they're going to call this against him. And he's, I, I will say, he's doing a better job keeping his composure yes. than he has in the past. But that is number four on him. And obviously, that's frustrating. I mean, you're one of the best players on the floor. You get called for, I didn't really see what the foul was for. Uh, it, it, it might have been a little bit of elbow or you're charging in. And so, but you have three South Central players on you. And there's so no it feels, it feels so. ticky tack, especially. Yes. You know, uh, after they, they've been so physical, this game has been called physical the entire way, or not called, I should say. Long range three, no good. Pepper comes down with the rebound, so this one ought to stay out of bounds here. 
And that's going to be a tough call as the official kind of getting in the way of that one. And Coach Eubanks was calling timeout, so... Yeah, we're starting to see some calls here go against Westville that is starting to kind of creep into Coach's head. And getting, and we're seeing guys getting frustrated here. And, and you know what? Honestly, I understand that call. Obviously, right. A, uh, and that's a, an official kind of getting in the way of the play and then maybe arguing. We couldn't see whether he was out of bounds or not. The table's in our way. And that was a bunny missed for South Central. Ellis with a little crossover move. Really nice move there. Hannon for three. Can't get it to go. Pepper with the rebound. Turns around. Dumps it right in, Kenny Pepper. And this is just four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. It's composure by Westville. And he steals that intensity. one. Pulls up, can't get it to go. Guys on the floor fighting for the ball. We'll have a timeout taken by Westville. And you know what? Honestly, this is a great teaching moment. It's going to be a full timeout, so we'll step aside. We'll bring this moment. Back, we'll talk about this when we come back. You're watching the PCS channel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's, the insurance professionals in Highland, Merrillville, and Michigan City. 3.54 left to go here at South Central. Special thanks to Berkey Family Farms for their continued support of athletics in the Porter County Conference. Stop in and visit them at 205 South Main Street in Couts. You can also check them out online at berkeyfarms.com. Berkey Family Farm since 1919. Before we went to break, I was saying that's actually a fantastic timeout taken by Westville and Coach Eubanks because you can see, you can clearly see, not only was the coach getting frustrated with some of the calls, the players are getting frustrated with some of these calls. And this is a time where you're going you're gonna to place, if you're going to go far into the tournament, you're going to get scrappy stuff. And it looks like Ellis might be hurt on that wrist a little bit here. They call it out of bounds. Yeah, Ellis is hurt. It looks like that left hand maybe. Yeah, his hand got bent a little bit through that pick. But like you were saying, it's a time for reset. And that's the focus coming into this fourth quarter then. And we'll see Husky come back in. And Ellis doesn't want to come out. But yeah, he's or may have even gotten a hand jammed uh, or a finger jammed yeah. or something. We'll keep an eye on that one. He's looking at that left hand. It looks like kind of more towards the the pinky finger area from what I could see. And we'll have a foul here against South Central, and it looks like it might be against uh, Bunce, which would be his fourth. Yep, yeah. that'll be. And that's the positioning right there. You have uh, Caden Pepper just being a little bit taller, a little bit more physical, able to handle the ball, and Bovard checking in for Hannon, who really doesn't want to come out of the game. And Hannon's had a great little game himself here. Nine points, three or four steals. I hit, yeah, four steals. Caden Pepper knocks that free throw down. Stay with us after the game is William, the Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game, brought to you by the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Bunce, Ashel, Guevara, telling somebody to cut. Oh, what a nice move. Called that one all the way for Grass. He told him to cut. He cut right to the basket and got an easy layup, and it'll be a full timeout. You're watching the PCS channel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean-to-cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso is a leader in athletics apparel and equipment sales. With in-house production, including screen printing, trophies, embroidery, and more, Blythe's can help you to create the perfect look. For more information, visit them online at teamblythe's.com. 
Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso, where the athletes shop. 3.31 left to go here at South Central. South Central coming out of the timeout. So waiting on Westfield to come out of that one, out of their timeout here, out of the huddle. Sam Bovard has checked in the game, by the way, for Westville. And then Andrew Husky is in there with four fouls on the floor. Also see Justin Bunce out there with four fouls as well. And he's one of the seniors on this team, so you know he's not coming out of this one unless he fouls out. And, and he's had an aggressive pressure. night. Yes, it's the pressure of South Central right now for the next couple of possessions to see if they can get a stop. Nine-point lead for Westville. We told you these two teams, as now Central turns it over, these two teams met earlier this season. Westville got the win, 61-43. That's Newborn, Newborn there uh, just splitting, splitting the defense, getting, the, getting in the head, getting that ball knocked out. Guevara running the point, giving up to Newburn right side, feeding down. Trying to put it up, gets his own rebound. Still can't get it to go. Newburn fighting for that rebound. And we got a couple of South Central guys down on the ground. And Newborn, Newburn hustling down the floor, trying to stop the momentum here for Westville. Pepper driving all the way, giving up on the left side. Bovard couldn't get it to fall through. And it'll be South Central basketball. And now the South Central fans starting to get beside themselves. Still a nine-point game, 2.47 to go here in this one. Good hustle by Newburn on these last couple of plays, hedging screens, getting that ball out, and then attacking, trying to get them rebounds. Ashel for long range three, hits short. I'd say he, I mean, he's, he's very close to being online, just a little bit too long or just too short. Can't seem to find that right stroke. And it's interesting. He kind of leans back as he's shooting his jumper. Pepper, given to Pepper in the corner. Husky. Brooks. Coach Eubanks getting he, crazy out there on the floor. He, he doesn't want his team standing. Well, he, want, he definitely wants you know to waste some time here on the clock. He got the nine point lead. You don't have to look for a shot right away. If you do get a shot, that one blocked. Guys hitting the floor, it's out of bounds. They're going to say it's Westville basketball. Yep, off of the Man, if, if, if this game doesn't mean anything to these kids, these seniors leaving it all out here on the floor tonight for South Central. Very impressive game. Oh, yeah, it's the heart. It's what they played for. They know there's one sports season left. They are, they are not playing like, they are, like their record is 3-17. and 17. No, they've gotten better throughout their season. Trying to get off that defense there. Seeing a lot of doubles. Brooks giving up to Hannon underneath the basket. He dribbles out. Pepper, this is exactly what you want to do if you're Westville. Yeah, Long range cool shot collected. underneath Pepper on the high low. That's Hannon playing above his uh, age right there, bringing that ball out to reset. Pepper able to get two points because uh, just playing smart basketball. Newburn feeding underneath, trying to get it up. And it gets blocked, but there's a foul. That was grass. And did they call it on, they said 34, 30, yes? Yeah. So that'll be against Caden Pepper, only his second. So going to the line to shoot two is Braden Grass. One twelve to go in the fourth quarter. Grass can't connect. And we'll have a check-in for South Central here in a little bit. Jimmy Ward will check in. And this will be an opportunity here with one twelve to go for Coach Spear to start getting some of the seniors off the floor. Potentially, I mean, it's a, it's a very close game. It's 11 points you have 11 still. points. You see how this is. Really... South Central's doing a good job just playing up full court defense with the press. 
never know where that could have been earlier this game. Guevara called for his third foul, so Jimmy Ward gets on the floor. We'll get a hand. Braden Grass comes off the floor. And for Westville, Scott Stacy will come in. Fan favorite, senior. Pepper can't get it to fall. Rebound, Newburn. Ashaw, I think, really wanted to shoot the three. Yes. But thought better of it. Turned over here. Husky brings it across the floor. And they're going to eat some clock. Yep. 37 seconds remain, and we'll have a foul by Bunce. Bunce knows he's And that'll be, that'll be foul number five. So fans will give him a nice round of applause as a senior. Number 13 is Derek Welsh, I believe. Yep, Welsh checking in, and they will give a hand to Justin Bunce, who it's a well-deserved hand as well. And for Westville, number 42 checks in. I don't have a 42 I on my roster. I not either. It's not on the roster. I mean on JV, so we apologize. Could be Jack Stacy. Could be. He's number 40. Well, Jack Stacy sitting down at the scores bench waiting to go in. Husky knocks down the free throw. That'll be his first point. And the seniors for the satellites will check off. And they will get a nice applause from the fans. Good sportsmanship by both teams there, allowing a little moment for the seniors. I, I, we've talked about this in the past, uh, on other senior nights and stuff like that. From our perspective, you know, you watch guys over the course of years play. You've gotten to watch some of these guys play for the last number of years. Yes. So, you some know, these, these, guys, these yes. are emotional moments, whether you're a fan or whether you're somebody who has watched from afar, even if it's not your team you're supporting, these, these are emotional moments. It is. It's the last time you'll step foot in the gym as a player. You come back, you should coach, but it's not the same. Welsh for three. Can't get it to fall. 17 seconds remain. Bringing it up the floor. Stacy. He puts up a shot. It's no good. Colin Ward coming down for South Central. Giving it up to Bennett. Back to Ward. And the time will expire, but a last second shot will count for Dylan Hale. So we'll add that to the count, and it's a 10-point win for Westville, 57-47. We'll step aside for just a moment. Don't go anywhere. we got awards to hand out. You're watching the PCS channel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. The team of sports medicine experts at Orthopedic Specialists of Northwest Indiana is committed to getting athletes back in the game with a focus on not only helping patients recover from injuries, but helping improve athletic performance to prevent injuries. Orthopedic Specialists provides the most advanced, comprehensive care to their patients. To learn more about all Orthopedic Specialists can do to help rehab and prevent athletic injuries, visit them on the web at osni.org or call them at 219-923-3300. Orthopedic specialists of Northwest Indiana, providing world-class care to Northwest Indiana for over 20 years. Are the freezing temperatures of winter starting to give you the blues? Can't wait till summer? Well, summer has arrived at the 2022 Lake County Boat Show. Come on out to the Lake County Boat Show at the Lake County Fairgrounds running February 25th through the 27th. Check out the 2022 models from Sandpan, Hurricane, Bayliner, and more. From canoes to kayaks, wave runners to pontoons, you'll find it all. For more info, check out the website lakecountyboatshow.com. We'll see you there, and don't forget the sunblock. From schools to stadiums, hospitals, and bridges, 
Everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Well, welcome back to Game Night in the PCC on the PCS channel. Michael Brandon here along with Matt Wellson. And uh, a really good physical game here to wrap things up for the regular season. Last regular season game of the season. Uh, sectionals start next week. Last regular season game of the regular season. Yes, I'm making sure Nathan's paying attention. He's thinking, I don't want him to hurt himself, Phil. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you're getting ready for sectionals. This was a good matchup to get you ready for sectionals. This was physical. This was hard fought. A lot of guys putting everything on the floor. It was, it's a good uh, rivalry within LaPorte County here in the Porter County Conference. And then they could potentially see each other next week at the North Judson sectional. So it, it does. It just takes it up just one more notch for both teams. And if I'm not mistaken, we have we will be doing that North Judson sectional game. Yes, is that the one we're doing? We're doing that. We're, I think we're doing that game on March 1st. I have to double check my. No, we're not doing that game. Okay, sorry, we are not doing that game. Excuse me. <laughs> Misspoke. All right, let's move on to our award winners. It's time to name tonight's peak performers, celebrating the best performances on the court. Tonight's peak performers for the road team of Westville. Westville, you have Caden Pepper with 19 points and Kenny Pepper with 12. Julian Ellis with 14. Gavin Hannon with 9. So you have four of their five starters uh, scoring most of their points for the game. Um, just to put that into perspective on South Central's side, uh, you have Sam Haschel scoring uh, 16 points for the Satellites and Alex Newburn with 11. Uh, Newburn I also had down for about five steals, or sorry, uh, rebounds. All right, now for the home team. Uh, that would be Haschel with 16 points and Newburn with uh, 11, and I had him with five uh, rebounds as well. All right, excellent for the senior Sam Haschel. Time to name our play of the game presented by IKORCC. Learn more at IKORCC.com. I'm going back to the third with about six minutes left. You had Julian Ellis attacking the basket. Don't know how he got the layup up there, but he did. And he did that a couple of times that, tonight. And he is just an athletic, uh, <laughs> athletic human. I mean, man, he can just take that ball to the basket and get a layup whenever he wants. Yeah, he was certainly impressive tonight. Got into a little bit of foul trouble, but he was able to keep his composure. 14 points on the night. All right, let's name the Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game, brought to you by the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Kenny Pepper, 12 points, uh, had to have 10 rebounds for a double-double. He gets uh, in the post, and he can be dominant uh, defensively and offensively. Um, he can score, and he can get uh, clean the boards. Does a good job. All right, excellent. Our executive producer, Chris Ramirez, coordinating producer, Nathan Laird, who is also our game producer tonight as well. Myself, Michael Brander, and Matt Wells in your broadcast crew tonight, along with Zach Miller doing a great job on the camera. Big thanks to John Haggard, the AD here at South Central, and, of course, coaches Eric Spear and Andrew Eubank for South Central and Westville, respectively. And, of course, you, the viewers, on Facebook.com slash Region Sports, regionsports.com, and Facebook.com slash PCC Sports. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we do so thank you we got sectionals coming up next week so make sure you stay tuned for all the schedules and everything that we got coming out next week it's a long week of sectionals we got it all for you right here on the region sports network the only game in town